China was a young republic during World War I, but a divided nation with various warlords contesting the government. China's economy, military, and government were unstable. The nation was further divided by, and in some ways unified against, colonial control and influence, stretching much of the country. For China, World War I actually saw a growth in colonialism within the nation. Japan became a more dominant player, seizing Chinese territory from Germany and expanding interests in Northeast China. China, however, much like Japan, saw World War I as an opportunity to gain influence with America and Europe, which might help end colonialism and see investment into China after the war, in return for China taking the side of the Entente, or Allied Powers. By 1916, the French and British were recruiting labor in China, and thousands of poor took an interest, as jobs in European munition plants and even trench digging paid relatively well, including money to be sent home to their families. In February of 1917, relations between Germany and China became far more hostile after a German U-boat sunk the friendship Athos, killing more than 500 Chinese laborers. China declared war on Germany in August of 1917, and the Chinese government became more active in recruiting laborers for the Allied cause, with the final number of workers swelling to 140,000 by the war's end, most of them serving in the British-run Chinese Labor Corps. Some estimates count the number of Chinese laborer deaths at 20,000. Laboring could be dangerous, and disease was responsible for many of the deaths. However, many stayed on after the war to fill the endless miles of trenches and clear mines. Though the Chinese government never officially sent soldiers to the European front, the Chinese military skirmished with Russian forces in Siberia as part of the Allied intervention in the Russian Civil War at the end of World War I. Elements of Chinese forces further skirmished with Allied forces at home, in part due to rising nationalism. This included American naval forces, like the USS gunboat Monocacy. Outside of China, ethnic Chinese fought for their adopted countries. Men like Lao Sing Ki received the United States Army's Distinguished Service Cross and Francis Croix du Guerre for heroism in combat in northern France. Ki was the only messenger of 20 to maintain communication during a two-day engagement. He even refused to be evacuated after suffering shrapnel wounds. After the war, China was granted a two-man delegation to the Paris Peace Conference. Their requests to end imperialism, particularly by the Japanese, were largely ignored. Japan retained territories in Shandong. Europe and America wanted peace, but a return to business as usual. China was the only nation not to sign the Treaty of Versailles and have delegates present. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this quick brief on China's involvement in World War I. If you want to support the channel, like and sub, or add any information you have on the subject in the comment section, and we'll see you next time.